Uh, that question? Uh, yeah, a great bounce back win for us. Much needed. Um, I thought all three phases contributed to the win. Um, still not to my liking. You know, still a little too sloppy for us. We started off slow. I do like the way our guys responded. You know, we didn't tackle well early in the game on offense. You know, I think we were one of seven going into the halftime. Um, would have liked to see us start off slow and not be so, as I like to call it, big little where we would hit explosive plays, but then have series of three and out. So we just need to be a little more consistent, uh, give Rutgers credit to you know how they played in the first half. We were able to get some things adjusted. I know for me, I wanted to see how our team would respond. You know, we had two weeks, two tough weeks uh, where we didn't get it done, and our guys worked really hard to not uh, reap the benefits of their hard work on Saturday. So it's good for them to be able to reap the benefits with the win. And just like any other time, the 24-hour rule for us, we'll enjoy it for 24 hours. And then our attention goes to Purdue on the road. Um, I believe we have a resilient group in that locker room. Uh, we're playing a lot of young players. We got to play a bunch of them today. You know, as the injuries mount, uh, we are able to continue to develop these younger players that I think will be very beneficial to our program as we move it forward. Um, and with that, I'll open it up to questions. Do you have any word on Josh's uh, high ankle sprain? High ankle sprain. Um, just to follow up on that, was there any thought about, you know, with the, with twenty something seconds to go in the half, uh, given the fact that he's playing with a pretty young offensive line, was there any thought about taking a knee at that point? Taking a knee with three timeouts, you would have wore me out if I walked in here and okay. took a knee with three timeouts. Or I think we had two timeouts. So no, we had the ball at the forty yard line. Um, we were trying to execute to get it in field goal range to try to score points before the half. Uh, I mean, that was the reason we had the timeouts. Um, we didn't get it executed, obviously, but yeah, that, you know, we need to try to score points before the half uh, to, to create more momentum and steal points because we knew we were getting the ball in the second half. So, The Jackers Law Group's successes have resulted in many distinguished awards, including Best Personal Injury Trial Law Firm USA, Maryland's Personal Injury Attorney of the Year twice, and Super Lawyers designation every single year. We succeed because we're willing to try cases, and insurance companies know it. That's why their claim reps often grumble they pay us more in settlements than any other lawyers. You deserve a great lawyer. If you've been hurt in a car, truck, or train crash, call 855-BIG-DOG-1. This is Mason Viner. Listen to the Young Turps podcast on CapitalSportsBlog.com and TerpTalk.com, the number one rated Maryland sports podcast. I've gone off that. Obviously, when you lose a quarterback for a game, it can be rattling to a team. What did you think of the overall response and then in particular of Piggy's performance in the second half? You know, Piggy was prepared to play in this game. Obviously, we, as I said, we we're going to give Josh every opportunity, and I was pleased uh, with how Josh played early in the game, which is why he stayed in there. But, you know, Piggy took 50% of the reps, and, and again, you know, going into the game, our thinking was that Josh were to struggle that we would have to make a change there to kind of get us going because this was a game we needed to win. So I was glad to see how Josh played. And, uh, you know, he made some good decisions early. He hits the, the first play of the game, you know, goes through his read, makes the RPO read, and delivers a great ball to Demas who takes it the uh, distance. So, uh, but Piggy was prepared. Um, you know, it wasn't as clean as I like. There's still some, you know, drop back run around in there. And that's why at the end of the game, we were still trying to execute our offense because if he's going to be the guy, we need to get meaningful reps and we've got to run our stuff. So uh, we were able to do that with Piggy and, uh, you know, now Tyler DeSue obviously comes into the fold depending on where Josh is with the high ankle. As you mentioned in the opening statement, six offensive drives and touchdowns, seven or three and outs. Uh, what factors into that? And Consistency. I mean, you, I, you give Rutgers credit. You know, they did some things different on tape. They did a lot of inside movement, interior stuff that with our offensive line and how we planned on attacking them. But I think you saw the, the long uh, run by Leak in the uh, second quarter was a byproduct of us making adjustments. You know, they were twisting and uh, up front, which were taking us off of our double team. So we went to our gap scheme stuff, and we were able to make some plays. And that's the same type of play we made with Anthony on the long run. So our guys took the adjustments. We adjusted really well and uh, took advantage of some of the stuff they were doing early in the game. Having interception and then you know helping force the second one. How big has you know his play been for you guys on the It was big today, um, which you know again we're defined in the present by how we perform, and I was happy with the way Ace performed. Um, you know I thought overall collectively on defense when we hold the team to seven points, 
Uh, it, it, it's pretty good there, but again, I, I didn't like our tackling early in the game, and I think we're reaching and grabbing a little bit, but we were able to get it cleaned up, and Ace has been a, a great leader for us on that side of the ball, so well, I was glad to see him have the production he had. In the back, Coach, I uh, just wanted to ask at halftime after the injury to Josh, obviously still being so fresh, what were some of the things you said to the guys, and then what was their initial response? Well, I think the big thing was we were going to get the ball in the second half, and it was important to get off to a fast start, unlike what we did in the first half of the game. Um, and obviously with Leak hitting the big play on the kickoff return, that ignited us. Um, the other thing we talked about was, look, when we executed on offense, we exploded with big plays, and what we didn't get was the consistency. And again, you know, we're playing with some new guys up there up front who I thought did a good job of taking some of the adjustments. You know, Again, Rutgers did a great job in the first half of changing up from some of the tendencies. They weren't a team that moved a lot on tape. But then in our game, they were all types of line stunts, which created some uncertainty for our guys in the run game. So they took the adjustment of going from our zone scheme, the gapping them, and running power and counter, and, and it worked out well for us. And our guys really did a good job of taking the adjustments. What's creating the issues with the kicking blocking scheme on the extra points and the field goals? You know, I got to watch the tape, Wayne. It's hard to see from the sideline. Obviously, you know, when there's penetration inside, the first kick I thought was just a low kick. And to me, that's, uh, you know, we'll get with our kicker. And you know, those guys are, are different in that. We've got to, you know, coach them through it because he's really the guy we got. He's been a good kicker for us. So what we've got to do is uh, figure out, you know, mentally where he is. I know the first one was a block because it was low. The second one, I believe, we allowed penetration through the B gap based off of what we heard from our guys upstairs. And uh, you can't allow that to happen in the kicking game. And that's what's disappointing because I don't like how we finish this thing. Every coach wants big plays, but when you have 280s, 100, 42, and 23, I mean, is that just regular plays exploding or what? Uh, it, it, to me, it's a byproduct of the skill we have. We have some big play running backs. We saw that in uh, leaks kickoff return and his long touchdown run. You saw it in Ant, who still isn't 100% healthy with his ankle. Fleet made some plays out in space for us and doing one drive. So I think it's a byproduct that we do have really good skill players. And what we've got to do is uh, continue to find ways to get them the ball in space to allow them to do what they are capable of doing. And today we're fortunate that we're able to get it done. Mike, um, you talked about cleaning up the tackling. Was it, was it also well, after seeing the first series of uh, defense, was it also making adjustments in terms of containing him in the pocket and not letting him run? Yeah, I mean, I think we were, we were prepared for what he was going to do. We, were, you know, we went into the game, we studied some of what he did in Burton Catholic with the kid at quarterback, and so there was very few new things uh, other than we knew that to expect the unexpected with trick plays and things and special teams. But no, I thought the tackling just was a uh, you know, we've been reaching and grabbing instead of moving our feet and taking better angles to the ball. And I thought, you know, we had opportunities to, to get him on the ground. You know, his first run on third down, he broke like two or three tackles where we've got to run our feet, club up, and get the guy on the ground. Mike, did you say that after the game, work with encouragement or anything? Obviously, tough week for him to take that job at under circumstances. No, I mean, I just told him good luck in the, you know, with the next few games. And, you know, I know he'll do a good job. He's a good guy, good coach. Uh, Come from a great family and coaching, so they'll find a way to keep those guys played hard. I gotta give them credit; they did a great job, played with good energy. Uh, we were just fortunate to be able to make some big plays and take advantage of uh, the, the momentum of the big plays. Take two more time to players. Uh, with the inexperience you have on offensive line, having the makeshift group put out there today, how would you evaluate what they did, and then you have a day on Sean Christie? Can out Sean Christie? Yeah, no, we took Sean out just because we wanted to get 52 in the game. Okay. We got seven healthy guys, so again, we're trying to develop our team. And you know, we had a big lead. We wanted to get uh, 52 in the game and give him some meaningful minutes, just like we put some of the young tight ends in. And you know, we're a developmental program. We're in year one of laying a foundation, so it's going to be really important with the way our injuries have hit that we continue to find ways to develop our players when we have the opportunity to. So, you know, Sean Christie's healthy. Um, if you want to evaluate the offensive line, I thought early on because of what Rutgers did, not necessarily what we didn't do. Um, you know, for those young guys, when they're used to seeing things that you teach them on film, it takes a little minute, it takes a minute or two to get the adjustments. But you know, our coaches did a good job there of, of switching our mindset of our run scheme from again the zone stuff where they 
was all the movement and slanting and the pick stunts that they like to run to stop the, the zone plays to getting us to our gap schemes has really helped us. Um, players, you know, mentioned during the week that they had, you know, come together to have the players only meeting and were really motivated to turn things around, especially um, in terms of their effort and practice. Do you see any sort of difference or kind of fire under them this week? I mean, I, I, I don't think we've had a bunch of bad practices. Um, you know, we played a really good team in Penn State, and much like today, where we had opportunities to create momentum, we didn't. And again, we're a young team that's really inconsistent. You know, I'd like us not to play to the momentum of the game. I'd like us to play really well every play and play the next play. But you no, know, I mean, I, I think the players' only meetings to me, we do them every week, every Thursday. So I don't know what was the big deal, other than. That's our players taking ownership of this program. And that's what we want as coaches. I mean, coach-driven teams are good teams, and player-driven teams are usually great teams. So we've got some great leaders in there, uh, guys like Keandre and Alice McKinney, who, uh, I mean, they work really hard. And I think it's important when you put the work in to be able to reap the benefits of it. And they're able to do that. Thanks, Coach. Thank you, guys.